Hey everyone and welcome back to the news. So today we've got an interesting story. It's one of Marty O'Donnell, who of course is the composer of Halo, and a man who had a very, very notable and rather public falling out with Bungie, the creators of Halo that saw him basically be ousted uh, during the Destiny development process. And the whole thing is interesting because in the earlier days of Halo and Bungie, Marty wasn't just the sound guy. He wasn't just the musician guy. He was a bit older, a bit more experienced in things than much of the Halo team. And that did mean that he had a pretty important role to play. Of course, his music was extremely iconic, is in the hearts of many, and that has meant that as his personal legal situation has unfolded and the seeming nastiness of his departure has came to light, well, that a lot of people are feeling, feeling quite bad for him, a bit angry at Bungie. Now, of course, there's all of this, you know, what's morally right? What do we, what do we feel? And then there's the legal side of things. And today we do have Marty O'Donnell seemingly falling foul of the legal system, getting himself in trouble and actually having to pay Bungie money. So to get into this. Veteran Destiny and Halo composer faces chunky legal bill after being found in contempt of court. Generally, you do not want to be found in contempt of court. So what's happening here is that Marty O'Donnell is going to have to uh, pay Bungie tens of thousands of dollars in legal fees after he has been found in contempt of court. So if you want to learn a little bit here, let's get into it. Of course, as I said, veteran composer across Halo and early Destiny. He was fired from Bungie in 2014 in an event that he called Activision meddling at the time that it happened. Now, as a part of this, he was ordered to return all assets related to his work on Destiny and Bungie. Now, this is including his uh, work on Music of the Spheres, which was an eight-movement symphonic concept album created in partnership with Paul McCartney, of all people, and that ended up being the foundation of The Sound of Destiny. Now, he was also then blocked from sharing or performing music related to Destiny. Now, your overall thing here is, I can't say about the being blocked from, you know, doing a cover or something like that. I don't really know what that would mean legally, but at least in an industry like this, like obviously the company does own the sound, right? He, yes, he made it. And that would actually mean that the default copyright would be that it's his, but in every single contract across the entire of the games industry, this includes like, I mean, us, every indie dev we know, ev like literally this is entirely standard across the games industry and across film, like, like everything. This is standard that, um, you know, it's the company that ends up owning the uh, owning the music. I think where it gets to be more of a problem is whenever some companies decide to be utter cocks about things and say, oh, we actually own your uh, creative output or at least have first right of refusal of your creative output in what you do outside of work. So there are some companies who will actually have an employment contract for a programmer. They will have first right refusal for anything that programmer does outside of work. Now, obviously, we don't do shit like that. We absolutely fucking hate shit like that. Um, but for this situation, yeah, he's making this music for the game Destiny. So it does have to be Bungie's property. And that is, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. It's the way that it works. And it kind of ends up having to work that way because what happens if, say... Hans Zimmer owns the theme of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and then he falls out with the company, and now the whole thing is put into strife. It's just the way that it works. So yeah, there, there is that in terms of what the legal situation will be like in his employment contract and how the ownership of that work will, of course, default to the company who is you know, paying for, uh, for the work as a part of their product. Now, this messiness around his departure really sucked, made a lot of people unhappy. We didn't like to see it because it's far better when people get on, but everything looked to have been wrapped up in 2015. Now, when I think about this and the Activision meddling, I immediately think back to, I forget exactly, you might remember Matt, but it was something about foie gras. Yes, it was. I believe the anecdote came from him himself. He was the one who, yeah. who shared it, but it was at a dinner around the time that, uh, Bungie and Activision were sorting out the deals and 
he heard, uh, I can't remember who it was, I think it was a financial executive for Activision at the time, yeah. saying, you know, it was, I think Marty himself was talking about treating developers like golden geese. And the, the, you know, the idea being they lay golden eggs, so you keep them happy, you keep them well fed, and they'll continue to deliver you incredible profits. But the, the executive said something along the lines of, but sometimes there's nothing like a good foie gras. Which is obviously uh, extremely, you know, you kill the goose to get the foie gras. You inhumanly fatten it up and you kill it for this one time only good payment. Yeah. So that's what he was, that's what he heard right there. So immediately you kind of go, well, Activision meddling? I can certainly see how that might have been part of it. Yeah, and have been involved. we have heard about many things of how Activision basically mandated the early releases and all of those things yeah. that certainly were, were rough for Destiny as the sort of game that really it should have been. Hmm. Now, we thought it was all sort of done 2015, but starting in 2019, Marty began sharing everything from musical sketches to alternate versions and full releases on YouTube and Bandcamp. Hmm. Users could even donate money to support those, uh, those releases. Now, the thing is, I wasn't allowed to do that. It is pretty much as simple as that. Now, I will say that personally, I think in, in the heart of the issue, I, I wish that some sort of deal could have been cut there. Yeah. Um, because that's certainly the sort of thing where, yeah, the company has those rights. But that just means that they get to decide what to do with the thing. And, you know, in a case like that, I mean, I wouldn't see the harm in just, I mean, showing the hand of kindness being doing the thing that I think the community would see as being the right thing. Um, but you can see when it gets in sort of a big legal situation that um, you know, those things change. So it's now time for Bungie's accusations and the court uh, rulings here. So in April, Bungie filed a contempt, uh, well, filed contempt of court papers against Marty O'Donnell, alleging that his very possession of those materials proved that he did not comply with his order to return all material to Bungie. Now, of course, in the age of computers being a thing, that means any files in your computer you give to them and then you permanently destroy them on your own computer so that you do not have access to them whatsoever and cannot have access to them and I suppose then Bungie don't need to worry about you having access to those things. And it does seem like the Superior Court of Washington, King County, very much agree here. In July, Marty was asked to pull all of his Destiny-related audio. He complied with his court order. He was told to post a message explaining that the tracks had been removed and why. He was also required to ask people who had downloaded copies of the songs to destroy them. That's the bit where I would say... You know what, Marty? You tell people to do that. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Let's keep that out there. I mean, look, I don't, I don't give a shit about protecting. I don't give a shit about protecting it. Let's just get yeah. the music out there. Um, so, the, yeah, there's that. Now, the court then told O'Donnell to refrain from making any direct or indirect public comment regarding these posts. And, uh, you know, this he, he hasn't done so much. <laughs> And then finally, he was ordered to pay Bungie's legal fees along with any income earned through the sale or donations related to his music and the cost of an external examination of his equipment intended to confirm the removal. Brutal. Which is very funny because, let's be real, you could circumvent that so friggin' easily in a way where an external examination would have absolutely no hope. Yeah, I like, <laughs> put it on a USB drive. Bury it in your garden? Yeah. Bury it in your neighbor's garden? What are you going to do? So, you know what? I, I really hope Marty does come out of this with, like, the original. I don't know what, you know, audio program he uses, but at least the flack, you know, some flack files. I hope he comes out with flack files of his own damn music. Um, and the total amount here looks to be about 100 grand. 100 Ooh. grand's a lot of money. Yeah. Um, now, the thing is, uh, you know, Marty was a pretty high up dude when it comes to Bungie. You have to wonder, did he have stock options in the company, things like that, that would mean that this wouldn't be you know, a humongous issue for uh, for him personally. Um, I suppose you would sort of hope so, but um, you know, obviously it is a big loss, uh, loss for him. So why are we only hearing about this now? Well, let's go. This was actually all sorted out uh, in the summer, but the verdict and the outcome only became public following a report from Eurogamer. Though some people did notice that something a bit weird was going on because Marty's Twitter account disappeared and then it reappeared. Um, plus... He uh, apparently started bombarding Destiny subreddits with 
Bandcamp links to his uh, Music of the Spheres, which is like the, the album. Um, he also advertised the soundtrack for a different project back in June to, quote, help with my huge legal fees. So, you know, maybe that is suggesting that he's, um, you know, that it's been troublesome. So, that, ouch. Now, as for what's next, currently he is working at uh, Highwire Games on uh, Six Days in Fallujah. It's interesting with Six Days in Fallujah, really, there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot going on there. I, I think what I would basically say is I have really enjoyed movies like Zero Dark Thirty and Hurt Locker. Um, I think that it's an interesting enough perspective. You're going to really try to get the realism of what that is like. Uh, in a sort of boots in the ground way, in the in the same way that those, you know, there's a lot of war movies that are extremely and perhaps one some of the ones I mentioned aren't exactly in that, but there's a lot of war movies that are not exactly having the most you know hoorah, mm. let's shoot all of our guns all the time, uh, message. So you know until we actually see what Six Days in Fallujah ends up being, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a bit lukewarm on it i'm not going to just say stop making this art purely out of concept i want to see how they actually do the thing mm. um you know who knows and of course if they do that and then it ends up you know falling prey to people's uh fears about how the, that game could go then yeah sure we'll have something to criticize but i want to see what actually happens with it so um yeah that's what marty's working on now but he also possibly teased a return to halo so there's this uh, coffee time in rainy Seattle. You never know who you'll run into. Joe Statton. Yeah, Jan, oh, yeah, Jane, Jan Taylor. Um, we missed you, Steve Downs, 117. Now, who are these people? Well, Joseph Statton, long-time Bungie employee with credits across Halo 1, 2, 3, and Reach and the original Destiny. He left Bungie in 2013 and then rejoined Microsoft in 2014, where he's currently a, a senior creative director. And then Jen Taylor is, uh, well, Cortana and uh, Dr. Halsey in Halo. Uh, and then Steve Downs, who was also mentioned here, is the voice of, uh, of the Master Chief himself. So... He's meeting these people, and then he said, there's nothing random about our meeting. <laughs> That's, uh, now look, this is 2018, uh, and I don't really think anything has been announced. No, I don't believe so. And certainly, if you were Microsoft, and you were able to have the, you know, the man who got the choir to, you know, moan about and do some nice music in a way that made everyone feel very happy, then you probably would mention that. Because that's going to get all of the, uh, all the Halo fans, you know, weak at the knees and excited. So I haven't mentioned that. So I don't know if something has fallen through there. Mm. Se seems but to be. Admittedly, it would be cool if he was attached to Halo again. It would cert it would certainly be nice. I think, given the time frame, I imagine it just... It would, it would never negotiations needed to happen, didn't happen in time, or something like that. But, you know, if there's nothing random about it, there's a decent chance there's going to be something in future. I would at least imagine so. And even if for nothing else, because the Xbox Game Pass account on Twitter would have the time of its life reposting all of the, you know, what a boy's bathroom's like uh, with all the Halo singing going on. And I think, honestly, Microsoft are at that point where they would get Marty O'Donnell to work on a project just to do that. <laughs> Probably, yeah. So that is the situation. Look here, the, the legal situation is very cut and dry. Yeah. He did agree to a bunch of stuff. He then did not comply with that stuff. And... Uh, I mean, look, it's, you know, whatever you feel is, you know, right or wrong within the spirit of the law or whatever. Like, it is what he agreed to, and he did not follow through on what he agreed to. And when that happens, you have to face the music. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like, I th obviously the legal side of it is completely clear, completely clear. He shouldn't yeah. have done what he did. We take no pleasure yeah, in this. Yeah, of course. But in a better world where maybe, you know, I'm... Given how Destiny 2 has unfolded and given how some stuff at Blizzard's unfolded where I think Activision took a lot of blame for a lot of things that may not have been their fault, I am a little bit, you know, uh, unlikely to just immediately point at Activision and go, no, they did all of this. But clearly, you know, if there was some concerns about how Activision were treating Bungie or treating Destiny and that's why Marty left, then it is a really, it is real shame because you could see a world where, like, if he's put Music of the Spheres up on Bandcamp, there's a world where that's up on, you know, a Bungie account or a Destiny account, and he's getting royalties for it. So it's the yeah. kind of thing where the legal situation is cut and dry, but morally it's really quite, um, 
really quite difficult to know where to lie without knowing the entire story which is really sad because obviously based on what we've seen i'd be inclined to say you know you go get him marty you know rage against the machine and whatnot but also you know d don't break the law don't do that so it's it's difficult yeah but if you agree to a thing you have to follow through on what you agree to that's yeah. that's how it is certainly so, is there you go that's it um i mean you know, wish him the best and <laughs> I am sure you'll be able to find music of the spheres somewhere. <laughs> and I think with that, uh, if you do choose to do that, well, good luck in your search. Uh, that is it for us. Hopefully, Marty, you know, lands in his feet and we get um, some more of that great music that we all love. And with that, we'll see you next time.